Hey kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today I have a uh, disassembly and maintenance of this. This is the Civivi McKenna. Now I just want you guys to know that it is almost 1 a.m. in the morning and I just finished folding my laundry and I thought to myself, hey, this would be a good time to do my first ever disassembly on camera. So here we go. I've already filmed the unboxing of this knife. Uh, pretty nice packaging, you can check it out. Uh, you can check out the video on my channel. Now one thing that's interesting about this knife is that uh, the screws, okay, the pivot screws and the back screws here are actually both T8 screws, which is nice. Uh, it means that I don't need to swap around screws as much. So first things first, let's uh, slowly take this guy apart. So a couple of things, uh, let's see if uh, I, at first I want to make sure that I coat the blade in uh, some kind of mineral oil to help prevent with rusting because this is D2. And as uh, most of you know, D2 is not a stainless steel. It can rust uh, more readily than well stainless steel. So it doesn't quite have enough chromium to be considered stainless. And then um, I wanna see if I can improve the action a little bit. The action out of the box is already really good. Really happy with it. But let's see if we can improve it even more. Cause right now with uh, such a light and thin blade, it doesn't really fall shut, but it actually falls shut pretty well. It just takes a bit of a shake, but let's see if we can make that even smoother. Okay, so uh, here we go. Here goes nothing. The virgin disassembly. All right, so that came out pretty smooth. Let's see if they used any thread locker. And they did some uh, medium strength thread locker. I don't know if you can see it here, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, there's some blue thread locker in there, which is fine. Now, as long as it's not the red stuff, it's good. Okay, let's take out the back screws here. Okay. So back screws are out. Pivot screws are out. Now can we just pull the knife apart from here? In theory we should. Let's take out the blade. You gotta be very careful with this blade because I've already cut myself a few times. Okay. That's coming apart. We have the first bearing here. All right. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, normally in a lot of knives, it is over on this side. It's normally placed like this. But in this case, normally on a lot of knives, the, the bearings are placed like this. But in this case, so she bear uh, so she placed uh, the other way around. So I gotta keep that in mind while I put this back together. All right, so here we go. Uh, three main pieces. We have the sides here. Uh, we have the scales right here, and then we have the uh, the liners right here, and then we have the blade itself. We have a back spacer, G10 back spacer, and uh, holes for the uh, the pocket clip. Okay. As you can see here, we have non-free spinning pivots. So this pivot right here has a little, so we have a non-free spinning pivot. This little pivot right here has a little notch here that goes into this notch right here. And then once you remove that, this thing should just, in theory, just come out. But let's not do any of that. This is try to keep it in one piece as much as possible or in as few pieces as much as possible. You know, just like in life and in paintball and even in knives, less is more. You know, when you do less, it just means that there is less of a chance to screw up. So you just do like the minimum to get it running as good as possible. Alright, it's cleaned up. Let's check out this side. Alright, nothing fancy. Now, if you see here, the detent ball is actually, I believe it is a ceramic detent ball because it's black in color, it's also very shiny. So that's a good sign. Cer ceramic tends to be a bit of a harder material. It doesn't really like to compress as much. So, uh, I mean, it's good. Does it really make a difference uh, compared to a stainless steel ball detents? I'm not 100% sure, uh, but it's nice that they incorporated that on a budget knife. And then we have the blade itself. 
nice sheep foot, extremely, extremely sharp. This is the sharpest knife I've ever gotten out of the box. You have the maker's mark of Eliza Isham or, or Eliza Isham right there. You can't see it. There we go. Nice maker's mark. And then you have an external stop pin. So the stop pin is on the blade itself. Sorry, what am I saying? You have an internal stop pin. The stop pin is on the blade itself. You have a nice uh, detent ball track right here. As you can see here, there's a little track for your detent ball, which is great. And then you have D2 right there. All in all, good construction. Uh, a lot of skeletonization to try to cut down the weight as much as possible, which is great. This knife is an extremely, extremely light knife, especially for its size. Well, for the length of the blade. All right, so all that is wiped down. Let's uh, wipe down the bearings. So what I'm using here is just a microfiber cloth. I would suggest you get something that's a little less fuzzy, but this one, this one works all right. Okay, let's clean the pivot. So you have some residue from the, uh, from the old thread locker. It's best if you clean that out a little bit. Make sure that once you apply the new thread locker, it, it stays well. A couple of ways you can do this, you can just wipe it down like this. You can use some rubbing alcohol to wipe it down. Uh, another way that you can do it is that you take like a little like a little bit like the tiniest bit you have and then just start scraping like so and uh, if you want to get even more uh, more technical or more precise you can use like a spring bar tool on a watch or something like that and uh, worst comes to worst if you're really afraid of scratching it you can just use your nails like so Okay, and then over here as well, you also have some blue Loctite, which is great. So the blue stuff is a medium strength one, and the medium strength is always good. You know, the red stuff you can never, it's not, it's not meant for you to ever take it apart. Alright, so next up, uh, clean it out. Let's uh, lube it up. Okay. First things first, let's get the pivot back in. Piv pivot's all good. Let's just make sure that we get the D shape in the right spot right here. So, the notch is over there. Let's get it in there. Alright, so you want to twist it around until you feel like it can't be twisted anymore. So that's how you know it's in the right position. And then you just want to hold it down. Next up. You apply just the tiniest bit of lube or in this case mineral oil I'm very uh, curious to try uh, KPL which is knife pivot lube I heard it's really good for washes and uh, it's alright for uh, for for bearings but you know it's just one of the things I want to try out okay then next thing what I want to do is that just to uh, promote longevity of the knife uh, just spread out the uh, mineral oil through all the metal parts right here yeah just like that just to like uh, prevent corrosion over time all right now the first detent ball as you know it came out like this so I'm gonna put it back in just add a bit more lube on the detent ball right there oops now this would be a lot easier if I had one of those uh, needle noses for the uh, for the oil. This is not a needle nose uh, drip right here, but you know it just means I over lube it a little bit. All right, next up, just add some oil that's on my hand onto this section right here, and then we are going to put this in like so. All right. So as you can see here, the blade's not touching the back spacer, which is great. You don't want the blade to touch this part here, then it kind of just dulls for no single reason uh, whatsoever. So I build a lube on this side. Alright. Build a lube on this side. Again, spread it around to the blade. 
carefully, very, very carefully. Put some on the detent ball track, like so. Put the next one in, like so. And then cover that just a little bit. Oops. And then just turn it around. Alright. Uh, let's put this in. Like so. Make sure it goes into the shoulders. And then start screwing everything back together. The great thing about this is that, oops, I forgot to add some more thread locker. Now, the great thing about this is that um, since they're all using the same size Torx bit, I don't need to keep swapping out my Torx bits, which is great. Okay, let's just add a little bit. Now, this is a new brand I'm trying out. Uh, medium strength lock, uh, thread locker here. I don't know if it's really that good or not, but you know, if it's if it's good, then I'll tell you guys about it. My previous thread locker was kind of just a little bit, uh, it became a little bit too watery, no matter how much I was shaking it. So I'm switching up the brands here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I gotta remove the blade from the lock bar because it's actually causing a bit of uh, tension in the blade. There we go. Okay, so what's happening now is that this is no longer seated in properly anymore. So I'm just trying to wiggle it around until it finds its spot. Okay, let's try a different strategy. Let's take this out. And I gotta redo this whole process. Hold on. Alright, now it's back in. Let's try that again one more time. Hopefully I'll get better over time. And just drop that in. Okay, that's feeling good. Alright, so now I'm going to put the back one in. Okay, uh, centering is just a smidge off. In fact, this is not flush either. So this was flush when I put it back together. So I think it might not be in as well as it should be. And now it's in. So I'm just gonna hold this piece down so it doesn't wiggle about. And there you go. And just like that, it is, I would say, Perfectly scented. Yeah, I call this almost perfectly scented. How's the action? Ooh. Hmm. Let's see if I can back this out a little bit. And not introduce any blade play. It's a bit of blade play now. The blade play seems to have corrected. No, oh, no, it's still there. Just just the slightest amount of blade play. Just tighten it back up a little bit. Ooh, that's a nice fall. No up and down. Just the tiniest, tiniest amount of blade play. Hold on. Just 
still still a bit of blade play. Let's just tighten it up. It's almost it's like ninety nine point five percent gone. And no more blade play. Alright, let's check the action. It's nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Ooh. It's nice. Let's see if we can back this up just a little bit to see if we can improve that action. Just a tiny amount. Ooh, that's nice. Not up and down. No side to side. That's nice. Now using the residual uh, oil that was on my hands, just gonna spread it around the blade just to help promote the longevity of the blade, help it prevent itself from uh, corroding itself. Alright, there we go. So that was the uh, disassembly and maintenance of the Civivi McKenna. A very good knife, very 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 good first impressions, very easy to take apart and put back together. Centering is still great, perfect. Action is just as good, let's just hope the Loctite uh, hardens over time. And yep, so keep an eye out for the full review, it'll come maybe in a couple of weeks time as I uh, you start carrying it more and more but just so you know so far super super impressed with uh with this knife all right guys i hope you guys stay ready and yeah cool see you guys next week